But I still believe that in this city where we have, you know, brilliant people uh, at the university, at, at places like Esri, there's enough brain power and creativity to work on this problem locally and come up with a solution. Yeah. And that's what I feel like we're not doing with Measure G. We're just going to roll over and say, okay, big developers with your money, come on in and do it. So I'm here with Lane Schneider. She is the Save Redlands No On G Principal Officer and Treasurer. Correct. So tell me uh, why you started this organization. Why are you trying to fight G? Well, I've lived in Redlands for more than 30 years. And um, the reason I moved to Redlands was because I thought it was a unique place in all of the Inland Empire. And I liked the way it seemed different from other towns. And part of that has to do, I think, with the kind of small town atmosphere. Yeah. So when I heard about Measure G, I read the measure, I read all the things um, accompanying it, I was shocked. I just thought, wow, this is going to really change our town forever. And um, it stirred me up. And around that time, I got a phone call from a friend, and he said, hey, we were like to get some people together to look at this are you interested and it was easy for me to say yes I would like to be involved because it's it's a, a deep feeling I have about Redlands and and what we have here yeah um, why why do you think that G is going to um be so harmful for Redlands why do you think it's going to be so harmful well I think that what we have that many people talk about all the time, both Redlands residents and people who don't live here but come and visit, is the small town charm and small town atmosphere. And that we have for certain reasons. We don't have a lot of big buildings uh, anywhere in the town except the Citibank building. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's smaller heights of buildings and just generally speaking a lot of green and trees and so on and this people like that and I think um, because what Measure G is allowing for is um, building of multi-story apartments uh, within a 782 acre area that spans Redlands I think that will change the atmosphere of our town to something different, something that will no longer be small town charm. Yeah. I, it may have its own charm, I don't know, but I think it will not be the Redlands that everybody knows and loves now. I heard that in the, in the measure they have, well I guess in the, in the city's uh, transit plan, they want to use form-based codes, mm -hmm. uh, so they want they want it to sort of pyramid, um, not have four-story buildings next to two-story buildings, but maybe have a three-story building next to a two-story building, and then up to a four-story. And so it it maybe it wouldn't be as drastic of a change. Well, I guess if you believe that that actually can trick your eyes, yeah, um, you're right. But I think no matter what, it's still whatever height it is, the highest height. Yeah. And we may be getting there by steps, but I'm still seeing what is actually there. Okay, so, so, I so if you drive through downtown and it's all four-story buildings, that's what you see there and you don't see... Like, I, on, in my drone, I could see the, the difference. Yeah. That's what you're well, saying. Well, I'm you're saying, right there no, I, th location. I mean, of course I see it. I'm an observant person, yeah. but I think that... Um, I'm not so sure that that whole idea is really a viable idea to sell people on yeah. Measure G. Um, I think if you say, we're just going to step up to the four stories, um, it's still going to be four stories. Or five, or six. I mean, I know that uh, they say it will only be four, but right now in the measure it says unlimited. So, unless that changes. Okay. so. So maybe in the plan that they have, they want to limit it to five, but the measure actually doesn't limit it at all? It just uh, does. It does not. I don't see that in the measure. As you probably know, the city attorney made a um, 
what's called an impartial analysis of the measure. Mm -hmm. That's available in People's Voters Guide. And um, in that analysis, he says that it calls for unlimited height and density within the transit village planning area. So if that's okay. true, then when you say, oh, there'll only be four stories, I have to say, according to whom? Yeah. So, so once, if Measure G were to pass, uh -huh. um, I've, I've heard that people would be able to kind of fight things individually, like if they don't want a large apartment building in where the Redlands Mall is, they could, they could say, no, we only want four stories. Um, That's fine. So, uh, but what would why? You say to that? Yeah, I think. I guess I don't understand that. It's kind of like we're in this now. Measure G has what it has in it. It's what I consider an overreach yeah. uh, by the council to include this very large area. It's a sort of like let's just get her done in one shot. But then to say, oh well, we can come back later and fix these things. Why didn't you fix them in the writing of the measure? I, I, I don't okay. get it. Um, if so, the measure were yeah. clearer mm -hmm. and more limited, I bet more people would be for it. Yeah. That's what I think. The, like, if, if the measure was a more limited space, it was only just right around downtown. Well, and also more focused. It's quite vague when you read it. I mean, it's basically just changing the plan to allow for, as it says in that in, um, analysis, unlimited uh, height and density in that area. And for a loss of traffic service at intersections, there's a number of points, there's eight bullet points on that um, analysis that says what passage of Measure G will do. And I feel like people should read that. Um, it's pretty clear. And, and so these are all things that most people in Redland say, wow, I don't know that I really want that. We already sit in traffic some, it will get worse. Mm -hmm. um, I, I guess that idea that, yeah, we'll come back later and we'll fight each one of these little battles one at a time. Uh, <laughs> I guess the thought of that just wearies me tremendously. Yeah, it would and be... And it seems kind of... And it's such a large space, too, Yes. to, to fight. If you were only going to fight over just the Redlands Mall space, then I guess yeah, you could do it later. That's but probably it, doable. Yeah. But that whole area is, um, it's a big area. And there's yeah. a lot of neighborhoods that are, you know, not that far away from them. I know some of the area towards Alabama Street in particular is kind of more commercial anyway. Yeah. But there are neighborhoods out there on Judson and Ford Street and, or of course, around the university and all the way through. I mean, the, that... Alabama to Judson incorporates five of the exits in Redlands, and those are actually the main ones, mm. you know. So I think this is the kind of the entire town. So if we're really only concerned about fixing the mall, why are we incorporating the whole town into that fix? So that's a pretty big reach to go from 782 acres to what is approximately 12.2 of the mall. It's a big expansion. So yes, we do oppose that idea. It seems like an overreach. Yeah. Um, now, the city estimate is that it will add at least 8,000 more people living in these apartments once they're built. So that's a, that's a pretty big jump mm -hmm. uh, in our population. So that seems like it will result in more traffic mm -hmm. and it seems like it will result in um, less parking. Parking is already a big issue in Redlands. These people will require water and sewer service. Uh -huh. So that's another burden. We already have the sewage treatment plant, which is under great distress. So that's another issue of which there's no mention of any of these things, of course, in June. Right. It's a very vague bill that just goes through and says, we're going to change this to a training village, the transit village planning area, and inside this area, all the, um, all of Proposition R, Measure N, and Measure U are eliminated. So those were propositions and measures that Redlands voters voted for to keep our town more of a small town feel yeah. with a limited height and so on. Mm -hmm. So we're going to eliminate all that in that area. And and that, that's a big deal to a lot of people. Yeah. So basically every, every section in the city where 
the people interact like downtown it's and the transit gonna, anywhere in the transit, anywhere in the transit, transit area, area yeah. it's going to be unlimited height and density um so even if even if measure g doesn't affect the outside the edges of, of the, the city. city yeah it still changes the city the core the core of the city um yes. so it's not like you're voting on at some edge of the city someplace no where they it could be high it's where everyone interacts it's it's the core of the city like yeah. i said alabama street tennessee orange and eureka university street and judson those are that's how far it stretches and last time i looked at redlands map that's what i would consider the core area agreed that the train is going through there and there's three stops one at esri one at downtown and one uh, at the university but that area goes a half a mile north and a half a mile south of the train line yeah and that's where the the development will happen is in that area um so that's a lot so and the, that's what i think people don't understand yeah but the train is already going to come in yes to town yes so do you think it uh do you think this sort of has to happen because the train's already going to come and so they need to have some sort of development they need uh extra people to ride the train so it's not this big uh financial disaster it, it, to make it successful maybe you need to have this extra yeah. influx of people actually there. you're right um yeah. everything i read about transit oriented development which yeah. is what this is called uh says that the number one thing you need is some sort of density of population around the stations in order to provide the ridership that makes the train viable yeah so yeah of course that's why they want to do it uh, because it is needed. Otherwise, it will forever be subsidized. Yeah. Do you think that's a? it's a better option to have more people live in that area so you don't have to subsidize the train? Well, I, I'm not really for subsidizing the train, but, you yeah. know, I, I guess I have been one that's wondered, do we really need this train? But that was something that came along a long time ago, yeah. you know, in Measure I, I believe, uh, was, which was a big county transportation measure uh, back in the 90s, yeah. where there was a, something in there about building a train from San Bernardino to Redlands. So I don't even remember that. Yeah. Uh, but that's this is the fruit of yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. So we have to deal with it. Yeah. What What would you say to people that, that say there's state mandates that you have to we have to have more houses in Redlands, we have to keep building. Yeah. Um, so if if we don't build it in downtown, um, we, we're sort of running out of natural land out on the edges. I know the, the Redlands Conserv uh, Conservancy has a lot of these trails out on the edges. Um, yeah. So we, we're kind of running out of space, right? Well, I don't know. I know when I drive around Redlands, I see a lot of empty lots and a lot of space. Yeah. Um, and that, it's my understanding that the whole idea here is what's called mixed-use infill development. And infill means filling in the spaces yeah. that aren't yet filled. So um, I think that, you know, much of this can be done now anyway without passing Measure G. Just as an example, we could take the market where Sprouts is. Yeah. The so-called Packing House District area, that right there. Yeah. All of that has been done under the measures we have, without Measure G. And it's pretty nice, mm -hmm. and people like it. But so, those, are, those are commercial, those, those are commercial, but yeah, um, I think still what has been done there, and the, there is residential around there, so mm -hmm. obviously there's some zoning about residential that at some point it could be done. I just, yeah. I, you know, I, I still feel this is a great overreach you know, to get what I think it does is it hands developers a blank check. Come here to Redlands and build your multi story apartments for which you will get a lot of money and then leave. That's really what happens. I've already looked at cities in the Inland Empire that already have this kind of development places like Claremont, Montclair, Ontario, and I don't find any of it to be particularly attractive. And in fact, there's a very 
kind of boring sameness about most of it. Yeah. So I, I just don't want that for our city. If we're going to say it's the jewel of the Inland Empire, why not try to protect that and keep that? And I understand that it's a lot more work to figure out how mm -hmm. uh, to meet any so-called mandates from the state under the measures we have, but I think it's possible. Plus, I know that those things, like for example, there's a thing called the RHNA that stands for Regional Housing Needs and Allocation or Assessment. It comes down from the Southern California Association of Governments. Okay, so we get these numbers. It, they come in eight-year cycles. And uh, the thing is, it, all, all that is is something saying, okay, Redlands, you need to plan for this many people. But if you don't meet that number, no one is coming to hold a gun to our heads. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a number. It's and a, so yeah. I think to pass, pass something or to be cajoled into passing something because we have to do this now or they're coming after us, I just don't think that's quite right. I prefer to say... Let's see what happens if we send them a message that we don't really like your idea. Yeah. And as far as I know, we're still a free country, so, you know, a free citizen. So I think we can fight for our city if we choose. Okay. So there's not necessarily like a, a penalty for not building these new houses. It's just a. Not that a, I, I just was a looking state at mandate, this. But you don't. That nothing happens if you don't do it. Is that what you're saying? That's right. I, I think that, um, I just think it's a sort of a scare tactic that's a little unfair because admittedly, a lot of this stuff is from the state is complex and what should I say, kind of geeky, you know, to get into and understand. Uh, so the average person probably isn't going to do it. Yeah. Um, and they're susceptible to a scare tactic that says if we don't do this now the big bad state of California is coming for us and I think I don't want to roll over like that uh, do you do you think that there's any uh, benefit though to having a lot of houses right in a small area in downtown where people could if they wanted to go walk to the grocery store and then go back home they wouldn't have to get in their car well i think it's good for those people who live there yeah. those people who choose to live there but for the rest of the city i think it probably creates a congested area that they can't get to as easily as maybe they can now for example the mall uh for whatever we may think about it i mean we know nobody's happy with the situation yeah um there are i think uh 900 parking spaces there. If you go to that that lot on any given day, you'll see a lot of people parking there mm -hmm. because there isn't parking anywhere else. Or if you go there during a bull performance, for example, yeah. it will be full. So these are things that have to be thought about and considered. Now he's just turning on his, his blower in the back of the truck. Just well, he's blowing out his truck. Oh, okay. Because he wants it clean. That's right. We're at the bowl right now. So this place fills up with what I, I think they had the uh, ABBA show. Is it ABBA or ABBA? ABBA. ABBA. Okay, so they just had the ABBA show at the Redlands Bowl this past summer, right? Was this last summer? Did I didn't you go, go, Did you go? so okay. I don't know. I heard that that was the, <laughs> the most they'd filled out the entire place okay. ever in the history of the uh, bowl. And so you'll get like 5,000 people here yes. on, on a, a given night in the summer. And so... If you fill in the Redlands Mall with housing and a little bit of parking, but not really parking, where are people going to park? Is so that's a that's what you're I saying. I think that's it's just a question a we issue. need to answer. People need to think about. You know, uh, when the Redlands Mall was closing or did close, I think there were a lot of different ideas tossed around. What are we going to do with the mall? Mm -hmm. But none of them seem to be pursued very seriously. So. Um, I'm not privy to all that, what was involved, mm -hmm. but I still believe that in this city where we have, you know, brilliant people uh, at the university, at places like Esri, there's enough brain power and creativity to work on this problem locally and come up with a solution. Yeah. 
And that's what I feel like we're not doing with Measure G. We're just going to roll over and say, okay, big developers with your money, come on in and do it. Solve our problem. Yeah. I just, I think we have enough here we can do it. What would, what would you say to people who are, who think that they should vote for Measure G? Are, like, are they're on the fence and they're, they're just like almost there. They, they maybe want to vote yes, maybe no, and they're not really sure what you say. Well, I think the most important thing to do is to read the measure itself and to read the city attorney's impartial analysis. Those two documents, I believe, will convince someone to vote no. And that's the best thing I can suggest to anyone who has been wavering and maybe they don't know what's in it get out the guide that you got from uh, you know the Secretary of State a booklet the text is in there of both these things and uh, read them and see for yourself there is absolutely no mention of the mall in Measure G and in the analysis there are you know eight points that tell you what passage will do and all of them, in my opinion, are negative things. Yeah. So I would suggest you read those things. Read those two documents, the measure and the city attorney's independent analysis. I think it's actually called impartial analysis. So what do you have a, a last pitch for the people in Redlands? Well, uh, <laughs> well I think if... If you care about Redlands and you came here because you loved what you saw, it will change and maybe that's something you want, but I don't think you will have what you came here for. It will, it will change that much. That's what I believe. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that uh, to just essentially sell our city to developers who don't live here, they're all from Orange County or San Diego, They've already sunk a lot of money into the city, but they also have sunk a lot of money into the Yes on G campaign. And uh, I just say, do you really want to do that? You want to sell Redlands to these people? I mean, that's kind of my gut feeling. Mm -hmm. um, just for an example, they have they started out with 25 times more money than we have. Mm -hmm. And now, now we've whittled that down, you could say, to 10 times. Uh, they've they've had over one hundred twenty thousand dollars poured into their campaign, all by these same people, yeah. um, who own some of the ball buildings, you know. And we are getting all of our contributions from people who live in Redlands, all of it. Um, so to me, that says something, and mm -hmm. should say something to a Redlands resident. Do you want to go with something being proposed and? completely financially backed by people who don't live here and stand to gain a lot of money from what they are proposing? Or would you rather side with people who live here and are willing to fight for what they have?